This is a 9 inch by 32 inch Jim Dinkin cowboy. So let's see what we can get done with him. We reproduce carving for a lot of different carvers. We don't sell their carving to other people, only to them. But Jim gave me the rights to sell a couple of his carvings. Most carvers don't want us to sell their style, so we just produce them for them. Yeah, these cowboys are really pretty fun carved. It's just a lot of drawing, really. You know, here we're just making the gun belts come away from the pants a little bit by making a little corner shelf, putting these pants on, uh, belt, and uh, shirt pockets. They're all there. That's just bad data. As you see, you can see how it goes from a like a little rounded corner to a it's like it makes it pop out by just drawing that little corner shelf there. You can see the detail so much more, you know, just right off the saw. And we went from a gas saw to the battery saw. Well, I like the gas saw for cutting that big chunk of wood out between your legs. It just seemed to do a little bit better job. Uh, and here I am just doing a little bit of drawing on his hair on his face there. And a little separation between his head and his hat. And you can see there's a, there's a little bit of knot hole in his mouth there. This was the second, what we consider a second, as far as uh, a rough out go, so I probably wouldn't ship that to note somebody that ordered it. But I usually keep these and finish them myself and we'll see if we can utilize that little knot hole that's in his mouth there before it's all done. So we're just separating his uh back side of his arms here. Uh, you know, usually I just cut, you know, a little bit out there. But there's enough wood, too, if you really wanted to, you could bring his arms away from his body and have them completely out in the open. But I usually don't do it. I'm carving around the gun here now, just trying to separate the gun there a little bit. Yeah, he's gonna be a pretty old guy. He'd look better when they're old and ragged. And working on his mustache there a little bit. Yeah, everything that we sell uh, online, you know, you can go to artistryandwoodtheroughout.com and uh, we have them all on, online. You can look at them and we have a finished picture of what they should look like. It definitely helps, you know, figure out some of the, the subtleties, I guess, that in there. And if anybody ever have any questions about a rough out, uh, they can give us a call there. We'll just try to help them out any way we can. So we just uh, got the angle grinder out, cleaned the base up, and we get it cleaned up a little bit, and then we all uh, get the nylon bristle brush back a hold to it after we get through with the angle grinder and uh, clean it up.
Dremel out now. We're going to do a little, little extra eye work here. This is uh, just a little corner bit that goes in, put the old wrinkles in your face and your nose and stuff. There's no one tool that you got to use. Get our eye tool out, popping your pupils in. the eye tool, a little bit bigger, put all the buttons in, so wherever you think there should be a button, you go through there popping them in. We'll be back to the nylon bristle brush here, give it a good wipe down before we get the fire on him. Yeah, it's a real gentle brush. Uh, and it's actually safer on fragile stuff than the Sandiflex. Sandiflex, that paper would jump out there and grab fragile stuff and break it off. Where this, you can still get in there with this if he was careless, but it's a lot more forgiving than Sandiflex. We're gonna give him a quick flash burn here and uh, give him a little bit of color, but uh, we'll be staining him. If you don't use stain, you can definitely get the same effect with fire. Burning in the cracks, darken the low spots, flap out the high spots, and so everything stands out a little better. Yeah, after we put the fire down, you see we, uh, we just going to run over him real quick with the uh, Sandiflex to bring back some of the high stuff back to real light so you get a more of a contrast between the low areas and the high area. Now we got got him pretty much burnt and flapped out and had that little flaw in his mouth there. He had a, a knot hole there, so we're going to see if we can't deal with that a little bit. So we give him, a, give him a whole cigarette and see how that works out. And the actual natural hole's a little bit lower, so we uh, kind of raised it up a little bit. I thought we'd kind of go over the stuff that we use basically on coloring our carvings here. Our main things, I got some dyes here that I made by Mixall that you can mix with just about anything. I use basically water for the 90% of it, mix you know the dye with water. It's real easy to keep clean in my airbrush. But what I probably use even more than the colors is men wax stain. I like gold note, it's probably my favorite light color. And then I use ventional and black walnut for my dark colors. Men wax make hundreds of different colors. I basically use two, 90% of what I do. And as far as airbrush system, I got cheap Harbor Freight airbrush, or you can get them on eBay. But that's about what we use for coloring our carvings. Hope this helps. On the cowboy here, we already had him burnt, and he looked pretty good at that stage. Uh, and a lot of times, that's where we stopped. But we thought we'd do a little airbrushing, and this is pretty much the same as the burn. We're just going in and making it a little bit darker, so stuff stands out even a little bit more. But this is still just your black and white tone carving, which is probably my favorite. A lot of times, we use colors, though, only as bandana and stuff, but... Basically, it's the same as the other ones. Is just get your dark stain, lay down your all your shadows. You know, make your fingers stand out, creases in your clothes buttons. We used uh, a little bit of uh, 
golden oak on his hat to make it a little bit different color. That's about it. Hope y'all had fun. We'll catch you on the next one.